Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Let's, so that's a good segue, actually. Uh, I'm Andrew Petrovsky. I work with Urban Design Associates in Pittsburgh, and I'm one of two Andys that has to present in the next 15 minutes. So I'll try to speed along pretty quickly. Um, this is a plan that we have worked on on the east side of Jacksonville, Florida. So again, if you're looking to learn terrain, this is not your session. Um, maybe that's a future one we'll do. But as you can see, we created this base map in our office using GIS materials um, and then did our process and created this plan on top of it. So this is a portion of the city that's the Jaguars Stadium up near the waterfront up there. And um, I just kind of want to take you through in the next couple minutes what our process is over the course of a four or five day period um, using both GIS and a little collection of building types that we create while we're on charrette. Uh, this is the corridor that we're mainly studying and using GIS and a couple other resources cruising around on Google Street View, we've identified vacant parcels and parcels that we thought were prime for development and we highlighted those in blue. We then kind of grouped them by um, character, ownership, <coughs> just different areas, parts of the plan that we wanted to work on is um, separate components and then over the course of a week we do our design pen and paper and then we translate it into SketchUp by first creating a couple of different types townhouse types multifamily types um, very very basic because this is all happening in a couple of days trying to get these ready for the presentation on Friday and uh, we pop them into the vacant parcels and redevelopment opportunity areas. Just zooming in on one particular area, this is a kind of gateway neighborhood that we had planned. So you can see that you're starting to get a lot of repetitive townhouse types, multifamily types, and if there's a special parcel that we need, like here, we just kind of adjust the basic type that we've created to that parcel. Um, same thing with the townhouses here. If you just want to take a group of three and then slide one back for some reason when you're walking around the neighborhood in your model, you can do that really easily. Um, then you can also export it into Google Earth. So like a lot of Google programs, um, specifically um, Street View or Google Maps and Google Earth, the lines kind of been blurred over the last couple of years between how each is supposed to function. Um, it, it's a little bit more well-defined with SketchUp and Google Earth, but um, they can sort of accomplish the same thing. We like to take it into Google Earth um, just so that you get these pre-modeled buildings already set where you need them. So sometimes, you know, the, the Jaguar Stadium will not be labeled the Jaguar Stadium, and sometimes it will not be made public, so it's kind of a schlep to bring everything into SketchUp for your model. So sometimes it's easier just to do it the reverse way and bring it into Google Earth. And they even render differently when you bring it into Google Earth for no apparent reason, but it's kind of pops in. And then using our Illustrator in-house, he uses that as a base, does hand line work with pen on top of it, brings it into Photoshop, and then using a Wacom tablet, put some color on it and a little bit of post-processing and you can get something like this fairly quickly. Um, this is just zooming in. These are a couple of live oaks that we wanted to preserve and create a neighborhood center around. Um, using our very, very rudimentary SketchUp model here with one of those more developed types in the back, just so you get a sort of scale as you're working. You can then add in some entourage on Photoshop start developing line work around it, and then bring it into Photoshop and begin the coloring process. And then end up with something like this at the end. And here's just another section of the plan, I'll go through this one quickly, where you can bring in very, very rudimentary townhouse types, put them on vacant parcels. And all of these parcel lines are derivative from GIS, so there's a lot of quick tracing over just to get the, the base in there. And there's another view. And that's the site at the end of the day. 
Um, another project I'll bring you through really quickly, this is kind of on a grander scale. This is in Moscow, Russia, a uh, new federal center expansion that we're working on. This is the plan for it. Um, and this is probably more comparable to Bill's earlier models of China he was showing, but at this level, we are trying to get a feel for the scale as opposed to um, you know, window bay rhythm and things like that when you're on the street. We've also used a plugin with this model where you can assign a building floor a color and say, you know, the red is retail here, blue is office, and I think the turquoise is maybe medical use. And just by painting the different floor levels, you can have a spreadsheet tabulate and say there's this many thousand square feet of retail, um, this many thousand square feet of office space. So it becomes a really helpful tool. Um, what's the name of that plugin? Um, we, it's it's a certain script. I can get back to you on the name of that, but we in our office we call it the God Particle. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lifesaver sometimes, but I'll try to find that out for you. Here's another rendering that you can get from that kind of a base. Uh, and then as another little sheet that we use in Office, we will take something like this, and instead of bringing it into 3ds Max or a complicated program where you have to sit around for an hour or two while you're waiting for your thing to render, you can pretty much bring the building straight out from SketchUp, and if you want to, in this instance, we just did a little hand-drawn patch around the buildings to show green space, and the SketchUp model pretty much remained the same, just turned the shadows on and threw some color on the park patch that we drew up, and you can get something like this. Yep. Mm -hmm.